Hi, this is Lisa Hill and I'm here today with Dr. Perone and we are um, getting my touch up and so I'm going to turn it over to Dr. Perone. We're going to be doing threads and some other stuff so take it away Dr. Perone. Okay Lisa, well welcome back. So we've kind of prepared things. We Before we started we put our treatment plan together. What we're going to be doing today is some Botox, forehead down here, a little bit out here. We're going to do a little bit of under eye filler here a little bit of filler around your lips, and then for your neck, we're going to do Botox for the platysmal bands, and we're going to do PDO threads uh, to get this to get your neck lifted up and back and also tightened with uh, uh, collagen stimulation from these threads. Okay. So I'm going to start with the easy part, which is okay. Botox. Okay. And uh, I've already prepared my plan here. These are these white dots. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to get started. And when we do Botox, we try to use a, a small, actually the smallest needle that we can. And here we go, a little injection. And I'm watching how many units. You know, one of the neat things about Botox is that you can map someone's face. So if you, if someone is doing Botox on a schedule, you can discover and learn what their dosage is. Everybody's face is different. Botox can be, has to be customized. It's just as challenging as fillers or anything else we do in the world of aesthetics. Mm -hmm. And uh, in general, when I meet a new patient and I'm treating them with Botox, I tend to err on the side of being conservative. You can always add more. You can't take it away. You have to wear for. You have to wait for it to wear off. So I do. I'm very conservative in my dosing of uh, Botox. Because uh, Botox I'm, is like what every three months you should. Every three to six months. You know, some people will get uh, three months out of it. Other people get as long as six months. Let's say an average is more like four. Mm -hmm. And right now I'm treating the lateral canthal region. These are also known as crow's feet. And you can see there's a little bruise here from the lidocaine we did because we're going to do filler in the under eye area. Uh huh. And we're also going to treat, these are called bunny lines. Can you pretend oh. you're a bunny? See, those are bunny lines. Mm -hmm. Now relax. And <laughs> we're also going to be doing a nose threads and nose filler. Uh huh. Good, you're doing great. And what I'm doing is before I inject, I just use an alcohol pad to, to wipe the area off. Right. And a little stick. And Botox is usually not very painful. Now you can bruise people with Botox as well. Uh, mm -hmm. any, anytime we use a needle, there's that possibility. Mm -hmm. So as I move around, I'm going to have my assistant, if I see an area that's bleeding, I'll just put pressure there. Right. To lower that. Okay, so now we've done the face now. In the, in the neck, what we're doing is we're going to be these are called platysmal bands. These are bands of muscles in the neck that are fair game for Botox. And by, and by grabbing the muscle and injecting a little bit of Botox into the muscle, we can quiet that down. And then more and more, we're doing combination treatment where we're doing the, uh, Botox into the platysmal bands. And then we're going to be doing PDO threads that are going to lift and tighten and pull the neck back. Yeah, this is what I call my turkey neck. I get that little gobbler thing. Mm -hmm. And the uh, PDO threads, out of all the things we do, uh, PDO threads are probably the most uh, transformational because they really occupy a place between facial fillers and surgery. But first I'm going to do some tweaking with filler because what I noticed when we talked earlier is right here in the under eye area you have a little bit of volume loss. And I'd mark that area out with that white marker. When we do filler, we use a, uh, we don't use a needle, we do some needle technique but we do more of a hybrid technique. Right now this looks like a needle, but it's not. It's a micro cannula. And so I made a hole in your skin with the needle, and now through that hole I put that cannula, and now I'm going to go into this area right here. You can see that little bit of volume loss out here, and I'm going to put just a little bit of filler into this under eye region, just to make you look a little softer. Good. Tiny bit of filler. The other thing that we do, the filler that I'm using, is called Velour. It's a, and it's a 50-50 blend. What does that mean? A 50-50 blend means that we take extra lidocaine and mix it in with the filler. And it just, and what that does is it embeds into the process that we're not going to overfill an area. Because one of the big challenges, I think, in, that, that injectors have in this under eye area, it's an, it's an advanced injection area. And I think the big mistake that injectors make is they, oh, they put too much filler in this area, they overdo it, and then people trade looking volume depleted for looking uh, lumpy or, or puffy in that area. So by putting extra lidocaine in, 
you lessen the chance of that happening. Doing great. Yeah, and I don't, guys, I don't feel any of this. So I know that you probably are clenching there on the video, but I really don't feel the needles or anything. Yeah, that's the other thing. Because the tip of the microcannula is blunt instead of sharp, when it encounters a small sensory nerve, instead of uh, cutting through it like a needle would, it just scoots around it. So it's a much less painful way to do filler as well. Mm -hmm. And you can see this area you're going to bruise. The reason you're going to bruise there is because that's a needle that we made to use to make that hole. Right. And, uh, and the bruising shouldn't be, should not be severe. No, so, Mary, it's not hurting at all. So now uh, we're done with that area. Oh, and uh, I'm going to focus on this area. You just have a little bit of volume loss around your lips. This is different from, from lip augmentation. Your lips are fine. What you have going on is you have a little bit of volume loss around your lips, so we're going to focus on that. Okay. Again, same thing. I just made a hole with a needle, and that little bit of white you may or may not be able to see is because when we numb this area up, we use lidocaine with epinephrine, and the epinephrine is a vasoconstrictor, so it causes that little white dot, but it also lessens the chance of bruising as well. So. Again, I, and I've kind of marked out the area I'm going to be treating. So I just treated right below your lower lip with this filler. And now I'm, I'm going a little bit up and I'm injecting right above your upper lip, right on the vermilion border, just to give a little bit of subtle volume there. We're not doing crazy big lips or we don't want to make you look ducky. We just want to create a little bit of volume there and then just a tiny bit up here. So through this one insertion point, I'm able to, to really you know treat your lips, the area around your lips, uh, through that one point. So the fewer holes we can put in people, the less bruising, the less painful, the better off we are. Yeah, and I didn't feel that at all, so. And although you're pretty tough, you know, you're definitely more stoic uh, than, <laughs> than most of our patients, but, but most people do very well with this too. Yeah, you don't feel it at all. Okay, same thing over here. One of the other great things about fillers is that when we do this, it's an iterative process. We do it in a series of sessions. So you don't have to fix everything at one time. You know, if someone has a lot of volume loss, a better way to help them is to do enough filler that you can make, see a difference, mm -hmm. and then bring them back two to four weeks later, do it again, tweak it. And if, and if for any reason one side gets ahead of the other, or if you're trying to restore symmetry, it can sometimes be challenging to get things perfect the first go around. The great thing about fillers and these treatments that we do is that you get a second chance. You get the opportunity, if it's not perfect the first time, to bring people back and do a little bit of tweaking to make sure it's perfect the second time around. Like even now, just with what I saw from the moment I went around, you still have a little bit of under eye volume loss here. So I'm going to go back into this insertion point, add a little more volume up here. <coughs> Doing great. Now I'm going to change to a little bit of a different technique now for your nose. Uh, tell them the, the story of your nose. I know you've had some procedures in the past. Yeah, about 12 years ago I had nasal surgery and um, I developed, uh, well I got like a, this crease and it was just the bone that was growing back. And so I, I thought I was going to have to go back in and have the surgery redone because they would rasp the bone and it was a really nasty process. And so then I, I met Dr. Perone and he said, I can fix this with threads. And so I said, okay. So we've been working on this now for a couple years mm -hmm. probably. And um, the scar is almost gone completely. Mm -hmm. And I come in and, and Dr. Perone, he, he just gives me my touch-ups with my threads. Mm -hmm. And so now you take it from there, Doctor. And today we're going to do a little bit different. We've been doing threads here. Um, I'm going to show you threads in the neck, but I'm going to do a little bit of filler here to work on this because sometimes we can get more precision because your nose looks good. I just want to, where this little divot is, I want to uh -huh. fill that in. So I'm going to start. And again, I'm using velour, but now I've got it in a needle and this technique uh, again, I did 50-50 blending. Just to add another level of safety to this, and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to contour your nose to get that where that little bit of contour regularity is to smooth it in. Okay. So a lot of times we'll do a combination of threads and filler 
in many different areas, but especially in the nose, that's something we do very, very frequently. I feel like I have to sneeze, but I don't want to. <laughs> mm -hmm. If you feel like you have to, just give me a warning and I'll okay. go out of your way. You can see those little red dots. You know, I've just made a serial puncture technique with tiny little holes. Thank you. But already, I don't know if you can see this on the video, well, but in real life, you can already see we're starting to smooth in where that little dip it was over here. Good. I'm going to come back to this area. I'm going to have my assistant just hold some pressure there. And while she's doing that, I'm going to bring you up a little bit, and I'm going to show this technique with threads. I'm going to come back to your nose. We're not quite done there. Okay. Uh, but I'm going to do threads while she's holding there. And uh, the first thing, I've already numbed up this area. You can tell because there's this white from the lidocaine with epinephrine. So from this insertion point, I'm going to put two of the larger threads in, the idea being these have barbs on them. They pull up and back. Mm-hmm. This is the barbarian ones. Barbarians, yes. Mm-hmm. And stick. Becky, if you can hold up here, I'll do that. Okay. All right, so now I'm going through with the thread. And again, these are barbs, so I'm pulling the skin over this. And what happens is these barbs attach to the deep dermis. And now I pull this out, so here's the thread. And you can see when I pull, I'm getting upward, backward pressure with that, or tension rather. I'm going to put a second one in. The threads I'm going to do shortly are a little bit different. These threads now are, again, the barbed ones. These are the ones when we use them on the face. We put them here to pull the face up, but we can use them on the neck. We can use them in different areas of the body, too, depending on, on how big they are and, and what our goals are. So I'm putting the second one in, just a little bit lower than the first. Now I'm pulling back. And now what I do is I, I grasp the end of the thread, put this hemostat, and now I'm going to pull. I'm going to take the skin and just move it down a little bit to make sure it's buried. And then I'm going to cut it off to internalize it. That's done. Now, um, now I'm going to change gears and do these other threads. So these, you can already see, I don't know if you see it on the yeah, video, I, yeah, we, we already can get some it. tightening here. Mm -hmm. Now I'm going to come down here, and the goal here is as we age, a lot of times we lose collagen and we get crepey. So the threads I'm going to put in here are not barbed threads but they're called smooth threads, and what these do is as the body reabsorbs them, it creates, there's a collagen deposition that occurs. Uh, and these are good for, uh, for areas that you just want to build collagen, like right here. So now that's one. And these are a little easier to put in, and they're usually less painful. The threads can be uncomfortable, especially the barb threads during that deployment moment, you know, for a second or two there can be really significant discomfort there. So now I've done two, this will be the third one. And what will happen, and you build on these, what happens with these is the body reabsorbs them over time, creates collagen, but in an area like this you may have to do, you know, two or three treatment sessions a few months apart, and after that you'll see, you'll see the skin is, you'll, the, is thicker, pulpier, and less crepey. Good. Right, yeah, see. you can already see a difference. And your nose already looks better. Mm -hmm. All right, so I'm going to come back to your nose. Nose time. Okay. And bend it a little bit lower. One of the neat things about doing nose filler and nose threads is you can really reconfigure someone's nose. If they have a hump on their nose, you can feather in around it to make it look less prominent. If they have volume loss, you can you can go into that area of volume loss and make their nose straighter and just make it look softer. If they have a wide tip, by, by doing volume up here, you can make the nose look less prominent. It's really amazing all the different things one can do with, uh, with nose. I just want to see you from this angle. Good. Okay, good very different, you know, different from what we've done before with threads, but that it overlaps with the, uh, with that approach. Mm -hmm. Good. Okay, I'm going to have my assistant 
full pressure there. And as she's doing that, I'm going to do the neck on this side. And you've had this done before, Lisa, so you know. <laughs> you know yeah. yeah. Sorry. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know how many threads I've had in my face in the last two years. Probably, uh, <laughs> what is that? Oh, this is PDO threads. And Dr. Perone is like, here, you'll be able to see really good right here. Okay, make a stick. So PDO stands for polydioxinone. These are threads, and the ones I'm putting in now are barbed threads. These are made of the same polymer that absorbable sutures are made out of. And so the way this works is... These, you don't see the barbs because they're, they're tiny, but we put the, this is on a cannula, we put this under the skin and we thread it to this area of the neck and the barbs attach to the deep dermis and then we pull it out, the, the, the thread stays in there and you'll see in a moment when we put tension on this, we're able to use these threads to pull the neck up and back, but instead of surgery, the person's awake and it's, you know, it's uncomfortable, but it's not super uncomfortable but it allows us to get upward, backward, tightening and lifting on using non-surgical techniques. And these threads have been available in the United States for about three years now. And more and more uh, doctors are learning how to put them in and they really are a game changer. Okay. So those were the bar threads. And already you can see we've got some mm -hmm. tightening. And the other thread, the final threads I'm going to be putting in are or it's smooth threads, and these are more for volumizing. Little stick. And the reason that you see these white dots again, that's the lidocaine with epinephrine, the vasoconstrictor, and that just lessens the chance of bruising by, uh, by numbing these areas up. We're going to put four of these in. And these are just really slick. These are on a cannula, not a needle, so much less bruising with these threads. There are also threads, you know, that come in all different sizes and shapes uh, for different indications. Another common area that we use threads is for the under eye area. Now for Lisa, we actually just did a little bit of filler in her under eye area, but for some people um, that just have a little bit of volume loss, an alternative is to put threads in into that under eye area to create volume because what happens to these threads is that they're reabsorbed by the body, just like absorbable sutures would be over the core, it depends on the thickness. You know, these larger threads, it takes longer to absorb them. The smaller ones get reabsorbed faster. Good, 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 good. Okay, we're mostly done. And before we finish, I always take a look and say, okay, is there anything that we missed? And, good, I still have the white come from my marking. Good, good. <laughs> We'll just blend it in. Yeah. Good, and that's still see that's just oozing a little bit. That's the thing we treat the nose. Sometimes there's a little bit of bleeding. We just put pressure on that. You can sit back again. Good. Good. And now, just about done, I'm going to finish up with just a little bit of volume here and here, and then we're done. And this is a micro cannula. I have Velour, which is a, a filler, an Allergan filler. It's one of the newer, um, the vanguard of these newer fillers that are much more natural. I don't know if you've ever seen people that have had fillers done and, and they look good, but when they start talking, you realize, wow, there's something off there that just looks a bit unnatural. So these new generation of fillers are just more natural looking, especially with animation when people are talking or, uh, you know, in, in their normal course of events. Mm -hmm. All right, you made it. That's it. Well, I'm telling you guys, if you have anything, um, everybody asks me about my skin and, and why it looks the way that it looks. And I have to say, it's because of Dr. Perone. He's like, well, the hardest part of this whole thing is holding this stupid camera up as a selfie the whole time. My arm is killing me right now. But um, as you can see, look, it's all done. And in the next couple of days, this will be just perfect. And Yeah, and you may have a little bit of bruising, you know, over here. You might bruise a little bit. We're going to put some Arnica gel on that. And then we'll bring you back, you know, and we'll do a little tweaking, you know, as time goes by. But you look great and you did really well.
Yeah, well, and so that's is it, guys. So I'm telling you, you need to make an appointment with Dr. Perone. He's here like once about a month. Every, about every third weekend. About every three weekends. And I'm at One Aesthetics here in Winter Park. And you guys need to come by and let these guys take care of your skin. They're amazing. And, um, and they're having a party tonight. And they're having a party tonight right here in the in, out in the lobby area. So you guys should come down here. They're right here off of Morris and Knowles Boulevard. Come on by and get some wine and party down. I think they're going to be here to like 10. Yes. Okay. Well, this is Lisa Hill with Dr. Perone. You guys have a great day and we'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.